What is going on my fellow navigators and welcome back to another video. With the release of Vivid Voltage less than two weeks away, I have been getting a ton of questions from the community asking me if I think this is a good set to be investing in. So today I'm gonna break down everything about Vivid Voltage. We're gonna go through the set list, we're gonna go through the products, and at the very end, I'm gonna give you my take on the overall grade that I think Vivid Voltage deserves as far as an overall set. And then I'm gonna give you my advice on how you can include this in both your short-term and long-term investing strategy. But before we get started, guys, go ahead and do me that favor. Give me that double slap attack, one for that like button, one for that subscribe button, and if you wanna be notified each and every time one of these investment videos drops, go ahead and thunder punch that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. So by now, I'm sure you are all familiar with the hype and the popularity of Vivid Voltage. The set has not even been released yet, and already products are definitely in demand, and there are a lot of people looking to get this particular set. But this hype and popularity doesn't necessarily mean that this set will have long-term investment value. So let's go ahead and jump right into the features that I've been looking at for Vivid Voltage to determine if it does have long-term investing potential. Now, one of the first things that I noticed with Vivid Voltage and one of the features that I think does set it apart from others is it is the first set to feature the cards known as Amazing Rares. And the Amazing Rares in this set are Raikou, Celebi, Zamazenta, Zacian, Jirachi, and Rayquaza. And I do have to say, these cards are beautiful. They really are very unique in their artwork, the way that the hollow pattern bleeds into the rest of the card. Uh, I do have to say, I, I really enjoy them from an aesthetic standpoint. As far as the actual pull rates on these amazing rares, we don't have great data on exactly how rare they are going to be because we don't have a large population of people that are actually opening these products. But from what I've seen online from early openings um, that I've noticed, it appears that on average in a booster box, there are about two amazing rares per booster box. So even though the name would suggest that they may be very, very exclusive and hard to get, it's not necessarily that case, or at least from what we have seen thus far. Perhaps in you know a larger population of products that are being opened, we will find that these products are in fact much more rare than what they have appeared in these early openings. But from an aesthetic standpoint, from a rarity standpoint, I think they do bode well uh, for this set for long-term investing potential. And the other thing that I really like is the fact that this is the first set to feature these cards. And to me, that is a really good sign for long-term investing potential when you have a set that is essentially the inaugural set for a particular type of card. You know, if you go back to uh, black and white, which was the first uh, sets to feature full art cards, you know, that generally bodes well for a set over the long term. As you guys know, I'm big on uniqueness. I'm big on uh, sets that commemorate special events, but also in this case, I really like sets that bring about a, a unique type of card that sets the precedent for future sets. So I think all things being considered, I think the amazing rares in here definitely bode well for Vivid Voltage in its long-term investing success. Now, if you look on the open market now, the English versions of these amazing rare cards, they are going for about $30 to $70 right now on the open market. Now, that's not necessarily an indication of where they will be once the set is released. As you guys know, with a lot of these early cards that you see on the market before a set's actual release, there will be a premium on those products, but then once the set is actually released, that price does come down. So it'll be interesting to see where these amazing rares actually settle once Vivid Voltage is released. But all things being considered, I do think that these amazing rare cards um, that are starting out in Vivid Voltage definitely give it a heads up in the long-term potential of this set. The next big thing to take into consideration with Vivid Voltage, and in my opinion, I believe this is probably the most complete set of this year, and especially thus far for the Sword and Shield series. 
What I really like about Vivid Voltage is you don't have just one or two chase cards in the set. This is actually a very well-rounded set with a lot of great cards in it that I think uh, collectors, investors, just the average person are going to be wanting to get when they're opening up Vivid Voltage. And some of the ones that really uh, caught my eye, uh, first of all, there are the full art cards for most people's favorite Galarian gym leaders. And those are Bay, Nessa, uh, Opal, and of course, Leon. And I think this is really great for the set itself. These are really the four gym leaders for the Galarian region that are most people's favorite. I know Piers is also another one, um, but for the most part, these are the favorite gym leaders, at least for most people um in the galar region and i think this really bodes well for vivid voltage that they included all of the full art versions for these four gym leaders the other thing in this set is that the hyper rare cards are i have to say absolutely beautiful so they also feature all four gym leaders um in their respective version and they they look absolutely awesome then on top of that, you also have probably the big chase card of the set, which is that Pikachu VMAX card. And I've talked about it in the past. I really like the design of this Pikachu. It definitely gives me those nostalgic feels of the chubby Pikachu from the early days of the anime. And I think that will also tug on the heartstrings of most uh, collectors and investors, especially of earlier generations i think this uh, pikachu v max will probably be the big chase card of the set and it is beautiful in its own right and then on top of that you also have two shiny secret rare pokemon in this set you have galarian obstagoon and you also have Orin guru and both of these cards again beautiful cards really enjoy the aesthetic value of them and like i said i think all things being considered with uh, you know all of the cards in the set, the set list as a whole, I would say that Vivid Voltage is probably the most well-rounded set of this year and thus far for Sword and Shield series. Um, you know, we we had great cards in Darkness Ablaze, obviously Champions Path. You had the two Charizards. Um, you know, even Rebel Clash had some nice cards. Even Sword and Shield base set. Uh, you know, you had those gold cards in there as well. But there was only a couple real chase cards in there. And outside of that, uh, to be quite honest, in my opinion, and I think for most people weren't necessarily impressed with those sets as a whole. Whereas with Vivid Voltage, I think Pokemon really went all in with this set and really tried to create a more well-rounded set for collectors, um, investors. And there's also very playable cards in this set for anyone in the competitive environment. So I think all those things being considered, I think that definitely bodes well uh, for Vivid Voltage, both in its short-term and long-term investing success. Now, outside of the normal set list for Vivid Voltage, one of the big selling points that have actually caught me by surprise for this particular set are the build and battle boxes. And these have been immensely popular in their pre-release period. And one of the big reasons for this are the alternate art uh, promo cards that are featured in these build and battle boxes. So in each of these, you have one of four promo cards that you can receive with each build and battle box. And the four Pokemon that you can get are Snorlax, Donphan, Lugia, which is one I was really excited about. As you guys know, Lugia is one of my favorite Pokemon. And then, yes, on top of that, you have the big man himself, a Charizard promo card as well. But this is something that has definitely caught me by surprise. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of the build and battle boxes to begin with because I like the fact that they are only released during the pre-release period, and then you don't see them reprinted or re-released after that time frame. So I think that's a unique uh, feature that I definitely like about these particular products. But then on top of that, you also have these fantastic promo cards. And again, you have that Charizard and Lugia in there that a lot of people are wanting to get. And within the package of these promo cards, you also have other fantastic cards in there as well especially when you open up that package for the charizard promo there are other charizards in there as well so i think these build and battle boxes are are really unique in this particular set more so than what i've seen in previous sets come out this year especially thus far for sword and shield 
So the build and battle boxes are definitely a unique feature that I really like and one that I again think is going to help out Vivid Voltage in both the short term and the long term in its overall investing success. Now, with all that being considered, guys, what I want to do is basically give my opinion on the overall grade that I think Vivid Voltage deserves as an overall set. And basically, the metrics that I'll use, and we'll only take modern and ultra modern sets into consideration. But the spectrum that we'll use for our purposes will be on one end of the spectrum, we'll call it the F of that spectrum. Um, we'll, we'll use Steam Siege on that end. And then on the opposite side, an A plus rating will be a set like Hidden Fates, you know, a set that was just above and beyond anything that has been released in recent Pokemon TCG history. So all things being considered, you know, when you take into consideration this set has the amazing rares, the first set to feature these type of cards, probably the most complete set of the year, in my opinion, in its overall set list. You also have those wonderful alternate art promo cards uh, featured in the build and battle boxes. For Vivid Voltage, I am going to give it an overall grade of an A-. minus. I think that this is definitely a set that is worth your time, worth your effort, and when it is released on November 13th, I definitely think that you guys should go out and try to pick up some of these products because I definitely think it is in that range of Pokemon card sets that definitely warrants your attention and one that I think you should be picking up once it is released. Now, from an investment perspective, if you're looking to pick up products for both your short-term and your long-term investing strategy, what I would say from a short-term perspective, the product that I would recommend looking at would be the build and battle boxes. Now, for short-term investing, I'm talking, you know, holding this product for one to five years to really see any type of gain on these products. I think the fact that you've got these unique promo cards in these products, the fact that they're only released during the pre-release period, I think you will probably see a pretty good profit margin if you hold on to these products for anywhere from one to five years. And then from a long-term investing perspective, basically anything five years and beyond, but more realistically, 10 years and beyond, um, I would say things like the booster boxes and the elite trainer boxes are the products you're going to want to hold on to longer. You know, with this being such an ultra modern set, it is difficult to say where this product will go into the future, what kind of profit margins you'll see from what you buy now compared to five to 10 years down the line. But I think all things being considered, I think this definitely is a set that has potential, but you're going to want to hold on to these booster boxes, to these elite trainer boxes for at least that five to 10 year time frame before you actually will see a profit margin that you are willing to sell at. So that is gonna do it for today, guys. Let me know your opinions on Vivid Voltage. Let me know what overall grade you would give this set and also your opinions on both its long-term and short-term investing potential. Other than that, guys, I will see you all next time. My name is Pokenav. I'm here to help you navigate the world of Pokemon one video at a time, and I will see you all in the next video.